All right, what's up y'all, it's like a fan here. As y'all can see by the title of today's video, we're here to talk about how to master the timing on contact dunks and just dunks in general, whether it's lobs, open dunks, contact dunks, all three of them combined in 2K22 next gen. So I hope y'all enjoy. If you do, for the drop a like, sub, if you're new, turn on them notice, all that good stuff. And let's try and get one to 1,000 likes. Now, just FYI, all these clips will be full screen like this. I'm gonna break them down, pause, rewind, kind of scroll through on the time tab, stuff like that. But real quick, I kind of wanted to prelude for you guys what I'm gonna be going over in today's video. So. We're gonna just go over all the captions that I created for all these clips. Now, I just wanna let you guys know, I did record this and I forgot to hit record and I was going for like literally over 30 minutes. And this video will be kind of slow paced. I'm not gonna rush everything into a five minute video and explain to you guys just, oh, this is this, this is that, this is the other, because there is a lot to explain here. There's delay on contact dunks. I just wanna let you guys know that. There's two different time, there's two different ways to time your alley-oop dunks. So that's something as well. Now, all these clips will be full screen eventually, and we're gonna pause, kind of scroll through, rewind, fast forward, all types of stuff like that to show you all types of visual indicators and whatnot. But real quick, I just wanna let you guys know, I wanna prelude all the stuff that you're gonna see in this video. So all the captions that I created for them, we're gonna go over all these. Now, I wanna let you guys know, I did record this video already, and I forgot to hit the record button, so <laughs> that was my own mistake. But it's gonna give me a lot of better like knowledge and ways to present this to you guys. So. What I want to let you know from the start of this video, I am not going to rush anything. I'm not going to turn this into a five minute video when it absolutely cannot be a five minute video. There's so much stuff I have to talk to you guys about. One of those things being there's delay on contact dunks online. However, there isn't on my career. So I'm someone who was in my career out here labbing, trying to practice timing my dunks in there as I'm grinding my finishing badges. Then I come out here in the park and try it. There is literally delay like crazy. I'm going to show you the visual cue as to where I let go of the meter to adjust for that cue. On top of that, for alley-oop timing, there's two different ways to do it. And if you do if you do one of the ways and do it wrong, you're gonna absolutely fail every single time. So I'm gonna put you guys on to that. Open dunks, all the timing is very simple and it's not delayed, but I'm gonna talk about how you should go about open dunks and stuff like that. And then maybe if you're approaching a contact dunk and it ends up being an open dunk instead, or just a regular dunk, as I should say, how to go about that. So there's a lot of things that we're gonna talk about. I'm gonna preview all that stuff. So how to green contact dunks, how to green the lobs. And that is kind of wonky as well. There's a lot of weird stuff when it comes to lobs and stuff like that. So I'll go over all that. We have even things like meter size based on interior defense or the height of your defender, all types of stuff like that. We have bad takes affecting the meter as well. So for instance, if someone's in good position and I still go for it, it makes the meter smaller. Lack of interior defense from your defender in terms of how much easier it's gonna make it for you to contact dunk on them, plus him being in bad position in that clip. Stamina and how I low key think that this doesn't affect the dunking at all, as you can see how low the stamina is in this clip right here, and my meter size was still really good and really big. And, you know, open dunks and stuff like that. Mind you, this guy right here was the guy with the rim protector and stuff, and this is just me going for the open dunk without the stick because there's no point in me timing it when he's behind me. How to build up speed and how speed factors into a bigger meter, in my belief, and just a better chance of getting a contact dunk animation, and then all types of stuff like that. And also, Good, good positioning from the defender in this clip right here as to how he was able to defend me better even if his interior defense wasn't great. So then with these clips up here, we're talking about how I thought I was going for a contact dunk and it turned out to be open and you know, an open dunk right here as well. Another thought contact turned open. So we're gonna start with this one. I, I feel like it's probably a bad idea to start with the open dunks because it's gonna really confuse you guys as far as like the meter indicator and stuff like that. But we're gonna go ahead and just start with this one because I wanna show you guys what I'm talking about as far as like me thinking I'm going for a contact dunk on this guy right here. He's dropping out the corner. I'm thinking I'm holding down on my right stick and that this is gonna be a contact dunk, but if you really, you gotta lab this stuff. You gotta really know what's going on right here. I can already see the defender. He's not getting put in a contact dunk animation. I see me going up for a tomahawk as well, which is not a contact dunk by any means. So you're gonna go ahead and just actually try and time the meter right where this white bar is right here. So there's a green bar. I'm not gonna call it the green window or I'm at least gonna try not to call it the green window because this is your green right here. You gotta hit it right on this white bar right here. Now the green bar is anything that's slightly early to slightly late. Now the higher you're driving dunk or you being on takeover with slash take or something like that or the worst interior defense that is around you or all types of factors can factor into this. But long story short, the green bar is where you're safe to let it go and you, pr you will probably still make it. Now 
you can still make earlies and lates on open dunks it's very possible very lates and very earlies though they never go in so if you're holding this thing down all the way you are going to be penalized and you're going to be punished <laughs> i gotta say i love the fact that they added this dunk meter to the game it adds a tremendous skill gap when it comes to finishing and you guys know me anything that adds to the skill gap with finishing i love and adore when it comes to this game so big w for 2k this year for adding this in but anyway again i just want to explain with this on this open dunk because it was a tomahawk and i'm calling this an open dunk it's not open but it's a non-contact dunk i'm going for this like green window right here because i adjust and i see that i'm not going for the contact dunk now we're going to talk about contact dunk timing right here seen a lot of you guys already i already know what the comments are going to be like laker this is too complicated you're going too fast you're not explaining it very well well <laughs> Don't be mad when the video is 30 minutes then, all right? Because there's a lot to explain. All right, so with this contact dunk timing, I am going to advise you guys to let go of this right stick right here because this is very clearly a contact dunk. I'm advising you to let go of this right stick right here. Anywhere from 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock is your safe spot when it comes to actually time, trying to time dunks. I would even just say, honestly, let go of it between 9 and 10 o'clock on this. Like, if, it's, if this is a whole clock right here, this is obviously your noon, 3, 6, nine and again 12 then you're gonna want to let go of it between nine and ten and you know with this video is gonna be a lot of you guys trusting me as a content creator and me labbing all this stuff and really being good at it and getting good at it and i once upon a time was not good at it all right go, like when i loaded this game up i was just as bad as you who is probably watching this video and really trying to figure out how the heck to do this <laughs> so i just want to let you guys know i once upon a time was timing my dunks right here every single time why because i was trying to let go of it right in this window that i saw and i was wondering why in the heck every single thing is late <laughs> so and then when you try and overcompensate for it at very first, when you guys are trying to maybe let go of it right here, you're probably going to start letting go of it right here on accident. And then you're going to be releasing earlies and stuff like that, trying to compensate for the fact that you have to let go of it early because of the delay. So pretty much what I'm getting at with you guys, be patient. You're going to have to learn how to do this. You're going to have to lab it out. You're going to have to try it a lot of times to really get the, the hang of it. But I am trying to accelerate your learning process by explaining to you when to let go of this meter. So it's going to be again right at that nine o'clock you want to let go of it right here now you have to adjust for this and you'll see it later in this video where there's someone really big and really good into your defense and this meter becomes like literally like this big like about this much size right here and you really have to adjust for it you can't let go of it like right here because of that you really have to like adjust and get it in a very very precise spot that you really really have to get 100 perfect timing on but anyway again there is a lot of delay on this if you yourself have bad internet and your latency is almost like 100 milliseconds or something like that or even like 150 you're probably even gonna have to compensate for it even more i would say good internet latency is anywhere from like maybe 50 to 20 that like 20 is godly latency on your internet and then 50 is probably good i would say anything over 50 like 60 ish and 70 is probably really tough and you're gonna have to compensate for it even more than what i'm talking about but that's my perspective right there so i'm gonna go ahead and just let this clip play out full speed you're gonna see right here i go for the pluck i'm not gonna lie these are kind of crazy they need to bring bump steals back though instead of this this is kind of bs how the plucks work <laughs> it's just so so like not even not even skill based at all i just wish bump steals were better because this stuff right here is pretty egregious like that a fact that i can just wrap around him and steal it but again boom contact dunk you gotta time that you can see it's very fast and it goes by quickly and as much as the shooters who are watching this video are gonna really hate the fact that i'm saying this i think it's harder to time a dunk meter than it is the jump shot meter to be completely honest with you guys and the reason i say that it's not a repetitive animation every single time your open jump shot animation is the exact same thing every single time except for with stamina factored in with this it could literally be something different every time like for instance i could have thought i could have thought in this frame right here i'm going for an open dunk then all of a sudden boom this dude gets absolutely pulled into a contact dunk animation i gotta adjust on the fly and then account for the fact that there's literally delay all the way to the point where i have to let go of it right here so all of this factored in i think it's very hard and very tough to actually get a hang of this contact dunk timing if you're somebody who is not a good slasher in the first place like you aren't you weren't out here doing really good things as a slasher before watching this video or the better way of me phrasing that is in previous games when you would just hold down on the right stick you weren't really that good at getting yourself open for angles on good contact dunks all types of stuff like that and you're probably going to struggle in this game even more so to be completely honest with you guys i think that's why a lot of people have gone away from builds that you know don't have three pointer on it so i'm just here to put on for anybody who followed my my footsteps and my path of 
the fact that I didn't upgrade any three-pointer and this is my way of scoring and I will master it. <laughs> I will 100% <laughs> and no doubt about it. So anyway, again, that right there, nice contact dunk timing. I mean, it's about as simple as, as what I'm explaining. It just has delay on it. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about just the delay over and over again, but again, you really have to let go of that meter a lot earlier than it looks. All right, so now maybe even my favorite part of the video. We're talking about lobs. Now, I'm really going to put you put you guys on game with this one. I really want you to pay attention and understand what I'm talking about. We literally farmed this clip <laughs> for, for the sake of, like, I'm not, I don't know these guys, and we're playing regular 3v3 Pro-Am, but we even farmed this clip just because I'm like, yo, Kitsch, I need a clip for the lob timing. <laughs> I need to figure this out and, you know, have something good to display on the video. So it's 4 to 20 right now. I set up in this left wing right here next to Tonic on the left corner. Quick little tip. For anybody who wants to actually set up your point guard for a lob, you're going to start in the same wing as your as your corner spot up is corner. And what it's going to do is when your point guard loops around right here and the team is playing sides or even front back, you're going to beat hedge defenders with this really bad too. But when you're going for this lob, boom, you're going to curl it off and then this corner defender is going to be really far away from it. And then boom, just like that, you're going to have a really good chance at an open lob right here. So you're going to see, you see this, right? And you're like, yo, that's a huge meter. This is the easiest thing ever to time. It is pretty easy to time. I'm going to be completely completely honest with you guys. Lobs are pretty simple. I have Lob City Finisher on silver as well, just to keep that in mind for you guys. But what I want to explain to you is there's two different timing cues to this. So the one way of your ethics that you could go about it is if you want to start holding your X button right here and just hold it knowing that your point guard's going to throw you a lob, you can do that because what you're gonna end up doing is you're gonna let go of this X button when you feel like it's right time to let it go. Now, we're gonna not talk about why the green is up here. <laughs> it's gonna make it very complicated for you guys and hard to understand. And on top of that, that could still get blocked as well. So we're not gonna talk about why my green was at the top of the meter. We're just gonna talk about the two different ways of timing this. So again, I'm holding X already right here and then I'm letting go of it when I want to let go of the meter. And I would advise for again just let it go at nine o'clock it's going to make it a lot more simple for you guys to understand you can see the green thing is like at the bottom right here don't believe that at all i promise you i've tried to time this and we'll explain why let me just backtrack again because it's a lot of stuff that really requires a lot of explanation when it comes to these lobs so the other way that you can time this is don't touch anything on your controller but your left stick and your sprint button right now so you're just moving toward the basket now when this meter pops up you are going to tap the X button when you want to let it go. So instead of holding X going into this, you're gonna tap the button wherever you want it to go. Those are the two different ways that you can let it go. You're either holding it way before this X button thing pops up, like this little indicator, right? You're either holding it way before this pops up and then you're letting it go when you want it to, or you're not touching anything before this pops up and you're tapping X as soon as you wanna let it go. So. The reason I want to explain that to you guys, and there's like 8 million things to explain with these lobs, so just stay with me. The reason I want to explain this to you, right, is you might get all jittery and stuff like that. You might just be running into this. You don't know you're going for a lob yet. And then what you're going to end up doing is when the, you're thinking at this moment, like, okay, 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 now I'm just going to hold it. Well, as soon as this pops up and you decide you want to hold it, that's when the game, like I said, has two different ways of releasing this. And when you press X in an attempt of what you think is to hold it before this actually popped up, of where you think you're gonna hold it and then let it just wind up and then let it go what you're actually doing is the other method of what i was talking about where you're accidentally tapping x right here and you're getting a very early so that's why i want to let you guys know you either want to go about this of not touching anything on this x button until you want to let it go or you want to hold it all the way before this actual lob is thrown so that you can let it go in this area while you're holding it and then let it go right here so now let's talk about the green window. So <laughs> this is where things get very complicated. From my knowledge and my science testing of all this stuff of me catching lobs and stuff like that, what I've noticed is this green window lies. This little like white line of where you're supposed to let it go for the green, so to say, it's a complete lie. I've tested this for maybe like 10 games on purpose of just catching lobs and stuff like that. And when I was trying to tap X in this window right here, specifically right here, I was getting earlies and very earlies and stuff like that. And this, anything before this, in my opinion, is complete BS. Like I would just tap X button or at least X button right at this nine o'clock window right here and just let it go right here. 
you can make almost anything when it's passed right here like i would say anything in this area pretty much just goes in no matter what and it's it's very simple now this animation right here is pretty ridiculous like obviously this is not one that i want too often <laughs> and could be very blockable in again even if i green it where i got it at the top of the window right here and this is why i say i wouldn't even worry about greening lives because a i can't even see it like it doesn't show up or anything like that and b if i held it for like just a split second longer right here i get a very late and it's just bad so this is why i say don't even go for greens on lobs it's complete bs you know if you're trying to look all skilled and stuff it's not worth it because man like the fact that the green window is right here and there's no little bit of slightly late or slightly like very late or anything like that like there's no slightly late part of this meter there's no late part of this meter it's literally just it's just green and then very late right after that ridiculous if you ask me so they might need to fix that it really needs to be patched in terms of that if you ask me because there's really no skill to lob catching at this point in time it's just really like a lack of it's like you trying not to be unskilled so to say so i'm just going to explain that now the methods of tapping x and holding x is definitely the skill gap in lob finishing that's really what it is if you ask me all right so now's the really fun part of the video where i talk to you about my most hated build of ever playing on this 1v1 court <laughs> we got the good old post score so the good old seven foot three dude with post take who for whatever reason if you've watched the attribute boost video of what this post takeover actually boosts in attributes for whatever reason it also boosts interior defense so not only is he seven feet tall with super high interior d and block but on top of that i'm super short at six foot six and when he is trying to dominate me on offense he can easily do so because i'm just like seven inches shorter than him so i'm pretty much guaranteed to lose games like this i just want to let you guys know that but somehow i even still clutch this up in one believe it or not so anyway right here i want to really explain to you guys how horrible it is to try and finish on these guys now i want you to maybe imagine in your head before this pops up what this green window might look like even with me talking all this garbage of how hard it is to actually do so i'm gonna let you think on that for like a second now here it is <laughs> now you see this when you're going in for this contact dunk as a slasher i promise you you are clenching your controller with all the might in your hands and you are getting ready to really focus 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 because i tell you what bro this is a tough green right here and if you if i were to tell you that i was going to green this dunk right here before actually showing you you wouldn't believe it but i pulled it off <laughs> so that's why i say these post scores are going to be an absolute pain for you as a slasher on this 1v1 court thankfully at the very least it's not make it take it so they don't just dominate you with post take every single time where they're just going to drop step drop step drop step drop step drop step or post spin post spin post spin or hook 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 and thankfully you actually stand a chance at beating these guys finally but anyway again one last run on that green window i'm letting it go like probably right here it's very tough though like you're gonna be right in the window of just it's a tough one like this is not gonna be easy to get and you really you gotta focus focus all right so now we're here to talk about how a bad take can really affect your meter size so in this one i have slash take on now don't be wrong this guy is also a pretty good interior defense like defender still but i promise you guys even if it doesn't relate to your meter getting smaller which i definitely believe it does but even if it doesn't i definitely want to encourage you guys like when you go for takes like this you're, you stand no chance at reliably finishing this you really got to clutch up and actually time this like really well but you can see i still time it pretty solid but you can never really expect this to actually work so you're gonna see right here i think i'm getting a good speed boost and i think this guy is like on my left more than this but he ends up catching up sliding his feet super quick now he's right like chest to chest right here and this is not good like this is just a horrible take right here i should not have made this if we're being completely honest but i get thrown into an animation of the contact dunk that kind of pulls like pushes him a little bit further back and then i'm able to still make up for it by timing it pretty solid as you can see it's not it's not the greatest but it's still pretty good and it's definitely makeable in terms of if the if the meter is this big and you put it right here you definitely have a very good chance of making it but again just one last time want to talk about how bad takes will definitely lead you to a very small meter so just keep that in mind we'll also talk about positioning and stuff like that in clips above so matter of fact it's actually this one right here so with this one the dude was in a horrible spot horrible positioning and we're just going to talk about what you can do as a defender to stop a slasher in the first place if anybody's watching this if you're you know not even a slasher you're just somebody who was intrigued by this video and you're an outside point guard please for all things holy 
press up or something or actually get up here go for plucks get bumps stuff like that you stand no chance at stopping a slasher if you're gonna be a goof and just sit right here this stands zero shot of contesting a dunk by any means you just at this, at this point you're just hoping that I suck and that I'm gonna let it go very early or very late and which is very possible too if you're not a good slasher in this game you are gonna be irritated in this game as a slasher if you can't adapt to this dunk meter timing and really guys like this are gonna be the only people you can even reliably dunk on with the X button because the X button is weak it is some weak stuff in this game and I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys I have not been contact dunked on one time or even attempted one time in this game nobody does it anymore and it's for very good reason probably because they can't hang with it they can't deal with it anybody who was a slasher in previous games is probably bailing because it's too hard to do in this game so I'm just telling you guys that I'm here to put on for any of the slashers out there who are looking for some help this year because you're gonna need it I promise you you're gonna need it and I'm doing everything I can to be as advanced and skill based with this as I can possibly be so with this again you're just timing this about right here you really don't have to focus too hard on this guy right here because he is just really a bad interior defender and he's in a horrible position as well <laughs> i mean combine the fact that he has low interior d with the fact that he's right below the hoop it's just not looking good for him and i have slash take on with 99 driving duncan hall of fame posterizer good night it's literally as simple as that as long as i can time it in a nice little area right there which is still like i said very possible to miss time and just completely screw up so now for this clip right here i put stam question mark because i really do believe and i'm just gonna let this clip play out fully you can see my stamina right here and you can see this guy was the guy that literally had rim protector takeover on i guess i haven't shown the clip yet but this guy has rim protector takeover <laughs> and that means he has good interior defense to some extent and you're gonna see the stamina of which i'm going up for this dunk on ridiculously low yet my meter is still pretty nice like size and good good area on this so I have no clue as to whether, you know, that actually matters in terms of you making dunks, stamina, that is. But either way, meter is huge. I end up greening this one right here, and it was with super low stamina. So not really understanding how that works. But anyway, to the next clip right here, this one is going to be about open dunking in terms of when people are, you know, guarding you too high. So for instance, with this one right here, nice little clip, I'm dribbling pretty nice, I'm moving really well, and I end up getting in front of him. So with this, you don't wanna use your right stick in this situation right here. There's absolutely no point to do so. It's just gonna be an aggressive dunk that's probably even gonna take any long, like even longer anyway. So you don't even wanna do that in the first place. And then B, you could just screw it up and miss it as well, which your lack of focus sometimes will get the best of you. So. I'm going to recommend to you guys either to hold X or hold up on the right stick when you have somebody behind you and you've gotten in front of them. And that's going to be very relevant for the slashers out there who do have three pointer. So for instance, if you're somebody who has like 99 driving dunk, but you only have 85 three pointer and you would call yourself a slasher still either way for anybody, pretty much you're going to want to hold up on your right stick. If you're not trying to time your dunk when somebody is playing way too high on you and in most situations it's going to be when they have to respect your three pointer. To be fair to this guy, my title is two-way slashing playmaker, so he might he might even think my build's supposed to be able to shoot, especially if you see the way I'm dribbling and stuff like that too. You would think that maybe my build is like a well-rounded like shooter as well. But anyway, this dude's playing way too high. He ends up getting caught reaching, albeit too. So it'd just be stupid of you to hold down in your right stick right here. So I'm just holding up, boom, easy finish. You really don't have to complicate it for yourself any more than that. It's just about like quick decision making pretty much is the only thing you could ever screw up with that. So for this clip right here, we're talking about building up speed for contact dunks. Now on stream a couple days ago, I had a couple people asking why I'm not just going for more contact dunks and stuff like that and why I'm dribbling so much or talking about I had a lot of open takes that I didn't take and stuff like that. When I feel like a lot of them are talking about takes like this where come on, I mean like this dude is literally standing for anybody who is familiar with basketball and doesn't need court art to actually show you, if you're familiar with the, the restricted area or the circle that's about like about this big and like about like right here, you want somebody to be standing right there for you to have a reliable contact dunk. Now, when somebody's standing way out here, you really think I'm supposed to just run right at him and that my player is just going to jump over his head or something like that to dunk the ball? Because I promise you I'm not getting a dunk animation very reliably in this situation right here i mean you can sit here and think that slashing is as simple as just running straight at somebody and holding down on the right stick but this right here is not a good take 
Like, he is flat-footed outside the paint almost and just, like, in a really good spot to defend me. So, I back it up, go for another take, boom, get a really good speed boost. And I, again, with this clip, want to talk about building up speed and how it's super important in terms of getting your contact dunks, maybe making it so people can't close the gap on you so quickly and get out here and actually defend you. Because you're going to see this dude was stunned. Like, he could not move by the time that I went for this contact dunk. Why? Because, again, I built up so much speed in a short amount of time while switching my ball hand where it was in my right he might even think I'm going to the right then boom switch it to the left go and just like that green meter green meter super big and the timing is super easy against this dude with low interior defense so to branch off of that we're also going to show you this clip right here where again this guy is pretty small he's not very good size and you can see right here he's standing right in the restricted area and what I want to talk about is defender movement impacting your dunk meter so what you're going to see him do last second, and you're seeing me, I'm just like, okay, got to go. Like, he's just under here. There's no reason for me to do anything but just go. And then, boom, he moves up last second. Now, I'm not sure if that is enough reasonable thing for it to be this small. I think it's kind of BS. He literally took, like, a step forward and just like that, and now my meter is this small. And maybe he just is, like, unreasonably good at interior defense and block, and I don't even know it. But you can see. The meter is pretty small. I believe the reason for it is because he is moving up. As you can see, he takes a step forward and then boom, my meter is smaller. I think the game is accounting for him like literally like running straight at me and charging at me and that it's gonna make my dunk a harder dunk. But as you can see, I'm still able to green it right here. But that is definitely a tougher dunk than I would have expected right here. So my only thought is that the movement of the defender could be the thing affecting your dunk meter size with that. So now with this one, we're gonna resume to the thing that I started the video with, which is the open dunk that I, was, that I thought at first was gonna be a contact dunk. So right here, I'm thinking this guy is dropping far enough for me to be putting him in a contact dunk animation, but it ends up, as you can see, when I see this little collect right here, as soon as I see my player take off and he's not getting put in a contact dunk animation, I'm realizing, okay, there's no longer gonna be the delay BS on this meter where I have to release it like at the nine o'clock spot or even a little bit earlier on this one. Cause you, as you can see this one, it's green meter is a little bit more to the left and like low than some of my other dunks were. But you can see I'm adjusting on the fly and I'm like, okay, boom, Tomahawk. Gotta release it like right here instead of right here, which is a very hard adjustment sometimes, but you're not gonna be in this situation too often. Most times when you're going for a contact dunk like this, it's probably just gonna put you in a contact dunk. And really, even if it didn't, then that's even better because this is definitely an easier dunk to make than the contact dunk is. So just keep that in mind. That's all I wanted to let you guys know. Some of these dunks, you're gonna be going for the contact dunk, but then it's gonna turn into an open dunk and you just have to adjust on the fly. Again, we'll come back to this clip right here where I was just kind of messing around at the end and you're gonna see I end up going in. Okay, that, that's a lot sooner in the clip than I thought. <laughs> um, you're gonna see I end up going in again. I'm thinking this guy is gonna turn around a little bit, be in a dunk of like a be in a contact dunk vicinity, pretty much. He ends up not being in the vicinity, and I end up going for the tomahawk, as you guys can see. And th I'm not calling this an open dunk by any means, because it's not an open dunk. But what I'm saying is it's not getting put into a contact dunk, and it's just what I'm gonna deem as an open dunk. I don't know what to call it. It's just a regular dunk that's contested, I guess. <laughs> but Anyway, you got to time it here instead of, like I said, when I was going for this contact dunk, I'm thinking, okay, I got to release it a little bit early because of the latency and delay on the contact dunks. But the open dunks are, you know, live timing. It's like very good. It's good responsive timing on open dunks, but it's not on contact. So anyway, that is all for the video. What I'm going to go ahead and show you guys real quick for the last thing is just maybe how to counteract somebody who is you know, playing good defense on you, yet you're kind of de decided in your mind that you want to go and dunk the ball and you're going to like combat that a little bit. So right here, I'm coming back out. I totally could have hit Apollo on, my, on the wing right here, but I'm just, you know, in my little slasher bag. I'm trying to, I'm trying to ISO. I'm trying to do my thing. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, I want to know how many people could see this right here and know what I'm going for. I, I really want to know. I know obviously you can't do this because it's just, you know, it's just, a YouTube comment where you could just watch what I actually say like 20 seconds after this and then end up knowing and then just comment it and act like you know but you deep down are gonna know what I'm going for here if you do know so anyway you can see I'm going for the right side I can't get it this guy's on my left he's straight in front of me I see a little gap right here so I'm gonna go ahead and double tap X. It's, it fits right through this little window right here where I'm not gonna bump him because he's a little bit too far behind me, a little bit too far to the left. Now, if he's like, if his body model is like a little bit further to the right right here, I'm fumbling this ball off of his body. 
I end up getting a and one off of this, so to say, because he goes for the reach in as I'm moving toward him. So if I would have kept going and holding down on the right stick, he's probably stripping the ball or it's a horrible attempt where I'm just running at someone who's literally at the free throw line. <laughs> so beautiful clip right here. I'm talking. That is just master slashing at its best and absolutely screw you to the person who says slashing takes no skill anymore because I've been doing stuff like this for years right here, but the dunk meter itself is a huge improvement and a huge increase, but we'll go ahead and just let this play full, full speed. I gotta say, I am in love with this game when it comes to slashing. It's perfect. I love that I can come to YouTube and really tell you guys and preach and really teach how I'm doing the slashing stuff. So anyway, that's all for video, man. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, for to drop a like, sub if you're new to on the noties, all that good stuff. And like I said in the intro, I was trying to get one to 1,000 likes. Now, if you made it to the end of the video, Put dunk in the comments, George Sports all the way through, or slash, whatever you want to do. Anyway, I really do appreciate you guys watching this video to the end. Stay tuned for the animations video that I will be dropping. I'm talking everything, like dunk packages, the dunk creator, like package that I created for myself that you guys can also copy and mold for yourself. All the dribble styles, all types of stuff like that. Even my hop jumper. I mean, I haven't used the hop jumper very often, but in the rare situation where you're going for a contact dunk and you accidentally are moving too lateral, the James Harden hop jumper will definitely help you as well to, you know, give you a very decent animation to cancel out of if you accidentally screwed it up. Anyway, animations video tomorrow. We are only dropping one video today, unfortunately. <laughs> it's, it's 6 a.m. as I'm recording this video already, as you guys can see, and I still got to edit it. I got to make my own thumbnail for it. And I've been a one man show with this stuff for the most part. I haven't been getting a lot of help with the thumbnails. A lot of people are busy with other YouTubers or, you know, it just is what it is. People are busy. So Anyway, a lot of these designers are at like school and stuff too, so it's just really bad schedules and it's hard to like fit, you know, myself into those schedules. So it is what it is. I'm making my own thumbnails. I hope you guys appreciate it and enjoy them. I don't think they look too bad either, but it's always been my own editing on the videos and stuff too. If I ever screw up, I know obviously I'm not putting any like crazy flair on it or anything like that, but obviously, you know, I got to cut my vocals if, uh, if I'm out here screwing up or something like that. And, you know, it's a little more professional than what I used to do where I would just go through in one take and no cuts or anything like that. And have a, I'd have a bunch of ums, buts, and all types of stuff like that all over the place. I've definitely improved at this stuff over the years, though. But anyway, hope you all enjoyed, man. And like I said, if you made it to the end of the video, put slash in the comments, search ports, man, all the way through. Other than that, take it easy, man. Peace.